<laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Always. <laughs> no, he's not. Hello and welcome to Perk Talk from Now on the Back Ass. Episode 10, where we react to all things percussion, talk to all things percussion, and this percussion stuff. With the, with, the, with, the, with the percussiveness and stuff. So, join it always. <laughs> join it always, my boy Will. And we got Zach with us again today. He's going to make some sporadic moment, uh, interests with, with us from time to time. You'll never know what so, I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. nope. This is true. This is a complete wild card. My thanks. Um, we are not My responsible thanks. for anything that comes out of his mouth. The thoughts of Zachary uh, does not represent the thoughts of the rest of the podcast. That can be said this. for every other person on this, on this group. Don't, even, don't act like it's just me. <laughs> oh, I had mine. I slide mine in here. It's an afterthought. <laughs> like, what did he just say? Did he just say? Oh. Wait a minute. But uh, it's all right, Zach. Uh-oh. I had a I had a Zach moment on the last podcast. Did you? <laughs> I, I oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh. That did happen. Yeah, I was like, well, all right, I'm by myself, so um, <laughs> let's talk about it's. Let's funny talk about this. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my composure. It wasn't even my fault. Mine was your fault. <laughs> Why are the buttons so close? I They're not on mine because I have my screen on it. But I digress. We are here to react to some percussion videos and lot videos from this past season. And I think we got a, a pretty good one to watch today. So, Will, who are you watching? All right. For me, my personal opinion, this is a top five group. Pioneer. Today we have got the Cavaliers front ensemble. No. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't even talk. Okay. But uh today, like I say, we have the Cavaliers front ensemble. Uh what, this what? video is brought to us by Innovative yeah. Percussion. Once again, we love innovative all day. IP. Mm-hmm. Let them know. And yeah, uh, we all know cavies, man. They with the tricks. They play a lot of notes, a lot of intricate stuff. I'm really interested in hearing all this. Like we always say, you know, it's hard to always get every little note when it's the full ensemble. So really thankful that people take time to do these yeah. live videos. And as you finish getting that set up, I, I really think that's becoming a thing now. As more and more people are starting to get the front ensemble lots videos out there which is good because mm-hmm. like you know I know me personally I like to watch them so glad. Um, and the combined videos too like SUV has been doing them for a while uh, Blue Coach does them um, so yeah. a, I see well, I just yeah, there's a couple cool. courses that, that do Part full, because full people aren't just drum people anymore mm-hmm. well when you see a lot mm-hmm. of like I know a lot of high school groups right. are moving away from lines too so you know if you want your kids to, to mimic what they see from these world class groups, you got to have videos that just that show just them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, showcase, show the yeah. love to the front. We could talk about that how COVID kind of changed the game on some stuff as far as that's concerned. So, but yeah, well, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into this. Cavaliers. That little triplet in there. Yeah. I was already like hands. Good rotations from the insides. Yeah. Touch on the dynamic control there. Yeah. Okay, triple permutation. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, split into a yeah. one-handed roll. Okay. And it was a one-handed split. Oh, those flutter rolls are nice. Yeah, all that really face for good control facility. I'm just gonna start with yeah. that. <laughs> right. Mm. Drop the bottom, didn't it? I mean, this old school cabbie front ensemble writing too. I feel like they've used this group before. Dynamic control on all this fast stuff is is something to be desired. I mean, it's it's yeah, it is. Simple panning effect. That was a really cool moment. I had that lick before. Oh, that is permutated mm-hmm. blue. I didn't know it was. I thought it was just inside mallet. Why does he have a spoon? Did y'all see that? (laughs) (laughs) Get hungry in the front. The pendulum. That's hard. Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. And it's no more than what it needs to be. Right. I like the grip stuff. You gotta get them <laughs> jingle bells, boy. <laughs> It's almost mm-hmm. like Pudditus. That's one of my favorite things about watching front ensembles is the way they communicate with each other. And like, you're, they're constantly yes. checking in with yes. each other for, you know, style, stylistic things and then feeling that pulse. 
Uh, <clears throat> and you can tell that Energy, they're emotions. constantly checking in with the cinema marimba and feeding off of whatever he's giving them or she's giving them. Right. Very last note, we are going to wipe out every single beat right here. Yes. I love it. Full commitment from, from everybody. Tell them. The communication is outstanding. Okay, here's that cool part that I was, I told y'all about this during the season, where they're playing with the uh, claves on the grip. Yeah. The keys. They're talking about getting that yeah. like wood on wood texture coming through. Yeah. It's definitely something you've never seen before. Like, no. Feels like I yell at a kid for it. <laughs> right. Right. Sounds cool. Like, like they came out of nowhere and was just like, it's like, okay. The communication is it's top notch. Another level. Mm. Another cavity's throwback that you normally see in the battery. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I never even noticed that. Yeah. So. I like that. Look at the triangle beater. Yeah. I 
wish we got to see a little bit more of the vibes. Yeah, I would have. I would have liked to have seen um, yeah. more of the rat too. Like I know that's not a place that I a lot of people could. like to watch, but yeah, it could. Especially after I've seen a show a few times, I like to watch the well, rat see, he, because he, he, all those little nuances and stuff that they bring that just adds just a little bit more like texture and stuff with like playing on random things. That's interesting to me because like you've heard it and then you like. For me, I try to figure out, okay, what are they doing to make that sound? You know, where is that sound being produced from? A lot of a lot of times in that you'll you'll notice in drum corps that what they don't do like mm-hmm. indoor does is they don't have rack players. They have like marimbas and the vibes will split up auxiliary stuff because you'll notice a lot of times the the mallet players will go play the concert bass and gong and they'll split those parts up so it could it could have been a vibe player or something but to me it what it might have been with innovative maybe they couldn't get mm-hmm. to a spot to see the vibes enough i know we caught that one side mm-hmm. angle but notice we never went to the right side no. so innovative angle was probably blocked and they gave us the best angle that they could have for that video but but yeah, that because there sounded like there was a lot of vibe stuff that I wanted to see, other yeah. than just hearing it as well. Yeah, it's it's um, uh, that was an interesting thought because, and I guess this kind of goes back to what I was so alluded to earlier. I was talking about how COVID affected a bunch of groups um, as far as like numbers are concerned. Because you know, DCI has a limit mm-hmm. of performance and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it used to be, I think when it was 120, um, they would keep that horn line, most groups would keep that horn line around 64. And I was just like, and I didn't understand why. I was like, why 64? And uh, a buddy of mine who's a drill writer and who who marks cavities, he was like, well, 64 gives you the most easiest ways to have you know, blocks and stuff like that. It's just a great number for drill. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, so, you know, the big thing was when he bumped it up to 135, and then now I think it's 150. Um, like, where do you put those kids? And a lot of, a lot of cores have put them mm-hmm. in the guard. Um, I think their horn line have gotten a tad bit bigger. I think most, maybe around 72 or something like that. Um, yeah. And they might have they might have added a snare or or something like that, but but the pitch has almost stayed the same. I know I got a lot of phone calls when Marching Man started to come back here in our state about all right, we're going all front this year. What do you do? How do you go about it? How do you approach your writing and stuff like that? So in uh, last year we did. We saw a lot of groups that were just just front ensembles or back ensembles as we are called or tied or wherever we decide to put them. Um, mm-hmm. And looking back on our Blue Devils video, um, I think I mentioned like I only think I saw like one or two rack players, but then they were also like the xylophone player that was in this, they were, they were in that right. second row. You know what I mean? So they were playing some, they were playing like xylophone and stuff like that, which you don't have to put a xylophone in the front row because it cuts um, regardless. Right. And, um, yeah, all cats. <laughs> oh, and, um, he agrees, um, but um, yeah, he he was. Um, I don't know. It was really interesting to to see. Yeah, that and then, like you said, you know, cavities. I think a lot of them, you know, you with the symbol racks, and now most times it's racks for other stuff. You know, you saw the triangle beaters and the triangles being played. So mm-hmm. they may be trying to shift numbers around. To where mm-hmm. let's get that extra horn player out there. Um, let's get that extra, you know, that extra snare drummer. Get that extra color guard member or two out there. We can do this with our, our quote unquote smaller front ensemble. Um, yeah, because maybe there were. Because it reminds me of that year, the year Blue Coast mm-hmm. did that, where they had the marimba players playing mm-hmm. the marimba and the vibe. 
I think they only had yeah, what, like down there. eight total in the whole front. Because they had, I know they had five. Either, it was either five or six mounted players because they each played marimba and vibe. And I know they still had a scent. And did they have a drum set or a timpani player? I can't remember that year. I think it was what was it? Jagged, jagged, jagged line. line or or? I always want to call jagged edge. Yeah, jagged uh, line and uh, session yeah, forty four had sure. smaller fronts. That's right. Yeah, and that that wound up being a thing for a minute where people were just using one person to do marimba and vibe mm-hmm. at the same time, and it kind of ups your creativity. But you know, you do lose. Those yeah. extra hands for certain things. Well, you use some vo- you lose some volume, but at the same time, everybody's yeah. masters at mic and stuff now. So you know you can have True. three murmur yeah. players and three vibes and sound like a, a thirty well, person. They like or can do it. Yeah, it's them. But I have I have yeah right. But I have noticed that a lot with especially with drum corps that they just don't typically, or I don't see a lot of groups with just specific rack players, like in indoor. It's like in indoor, you just need it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, just because the front carries a different type of weight in indoor than it does outdoors, I think. Mm -hmm. And all of those, you want all of the colors that you can get. So you might have two or three specific just rack people. Yeah. Um, I know Mystique has them. Probably. Yeah, that's why I love Mystique's rack. This is, They usually will have at least two minimum on both yeah. sides. So, um, but yeah, back to caveats. is not as many tricks as they typically do. Or stunts, I don't want to call them tricks because the tricks makes it sound. Yeah. Um, but not as many like stunts as they actually do. But like, there's some like, there's some like hidden stuff in there. Like, you know, in that opening section, doing that, doing that, uh, you know, the dual bass run, but then just randomly throwing in a triplet somewhere in there. Like, those type right. of things. Like, right. I think this is one of the top musical. Musically yes. played fronts that I've yes. seen them do. Um, you want to talk about microphrasing yep. and yes. shaping every yep. maximum thing that you can. That was a perfect yeah, example. Yeah, it's of like, it, you know, because a lot of kids it's, it's, it's are going a couple like times where it's like they pulled the rug out from under you dynamically. It just can't, it went completely mm-hmm. gone and then brought it back mm-hmm. just as fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. That's why I was. Oh, go ahead, Will. Oh, no, you can go. I, was just, I mean, I was just going to say, that's what I was talking about, you know, microphrasing. Uh, a lot of times when kids get to very technical, technically demanding stuff, they just want to play it mm-hmm. high and loud all the time because they're just trying to get through it. Um, and, you know, and this is where having a good grounded te- technique can allow you to to shape things that are a lot more difficult. Or well, not only just play them, but like play them with some musicality and virtuosity. Yeah. And, and kind of go on with it. That's why I was going to say, um, I mean, we said it when while they were playing, like I don't think people really know how hard it is to clean double stop stuff like that. Like when they're using all four mallets and they're playing, they're playing for a uh, full chord, but it's all double stop. And as much as they played it for as long as they played it while crescendo, I was like, okay, that's people, I don't really think people think that's hard, but that's hard. Mm-hmm. When, you're, when you're speaking about a whole ensemble doing it, don't think about yourself. When sometimes people will think about themselves when they say, oh, that's not that hard. So, yeah, you can play it, mm-hmm. but I want you to go teach this middle school group yeah. to do it. Now, I'll tell you that it's not hard. That's the things that I'm talking about. Like, It doesn't matter if they're professionals or not, you yeah. still gotta clean it. You still got to get clean. So and they and they had some cold attacks in their in their mm-hmm. book too. I was like, where did this run come from out of nowhere? Yeah. 
you know, no tech pattern in there or no leading up to it. It's just like, all right. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> whoa, okay, wait a minute. Right. Like, wait. Nobody did it or nothing. Not a now now that was to be found in the front. Now, if you were, you know, here's the cool thing about that, though. If you had it muted or you were deaf, you could feel the tempo of every single bit of that because of of Mm -hmm. just the communication that you alluded to in the video. I mean, they were, Mm -hmm. they were visually metronome. Like every single bit of it. You know, and that's hard to do while you're playing like that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very difficult to to keep that type of energy in the, in the body. And yet, you know, as Will is so famously saying, stop it at the wrist and then play all the stuff that you need mm-hmm. to play. Like that, that's that's fantastic training by the, the Cavalier percussion staff there. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos to them for that. Well, it, and those kids. It's one of those things where it, it takes one person to kind of set the tone and everybody else has got to fall into that because and, and it's really hard to be that one person in that group because you kind of feel like an idiot when you first do it. Like I remember like mm-hmm. when I was doing indoor, like trying to be expression, you know, have expression as you play was kind of a newer thing to us because we were just getting started and Mm-hmm. If you don't practice those things and do those things during runs and reps, like in sectionals and things like that, if you try to do that the day of or in the lot before you go inside, you're going to mess up. And if you're the first person to try and and, and mm-hmm. set that in your group, you're going to feel kind of dumb because you're the only one doing it. But then once everybody else buys in and, and – and joins in and, and starts doing that kind of thing, it kind of elevates your ensemble. Yep. Yeah, we, you know, I try to, I think what DCI and your top notch indoor groups do really well is yep. every rep's a performance. Be. That way, when you get when you get to a performance, it just feels like That's another what I rep. That's my kids all the time. Like, the practice field is where you know, we try out our new things and we perfect it and we polish it. And then like Friday night football games and Saturdays are where you just go and show it off everybody. Like those are the doms where you should be the least nervous. I mean, I know that's easier said than done because I, I get nervous and I don't even march anymore. Like I think I'm more nervous than the kids are, especially when it comes to awards. <laughs> But like I told, I told my group, I was like, if we ever for some reason yeah, make state finals, I will not be there because I'll be in the hospital because I will have had a stroke. Like, not, not. I'm just gonna have to FaceTime me or something <laughs> because I, I, I will not be there. But yeah, it's like you gotta if you set that tone and do those things during rehearsals on a Saturday at a show or at a football game the night before. It's it should be just a, a rep where you go out there and you. And you show it off, and you feel good about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, getting getting comfortable mm-hmm. with where you are and what you're doing, because you know the the body and the brain reacts to stress in in different ways. So if you don't train your body and your mind to be like this is just another rep, there might be thousands of people watching, me, but it's still just another rep. Um, you and you could pro- you could probably go to any any Cavies rehearsal at any point during the day at any point in the season, and you're probably getting the same energy every single time mm-hmm. because I believe you know I, those you know some people may ask you know why is the audition process so long like why does it take them two or three months uh, you know callbacks and stuff like that For to consistency to yeah, like seeing who's going to – looking for consistency, looking for improvement. Like who can adapt to that style? Like, you know, I will can tell you when I when I did – when I auditioned for Eclipse, um, I didn't say not a word the first weekend, I don't think, just because I was like – I'm thinking – these guys just won world championships in their class last year. I need to come in and act professional. And so I was in straight up like concert classic 
percussion mode. Like I was playing on a book, but I looked, you know, and everybody else around me is like, you know, vibing and doing all this other stuff. And I'm just like, <laughs> and they ever, everybody thought I was hating life because of, of that. And it's like, you know, I, I remember having a little interview with one of the, one of the members and it's like, are you doing okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Well, are you, in, you got any questions? Like, no. Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm all right. Are you going to come back? I'm like, uh, if I make the group, I'll come back. And you're like, oh, you're probably going to make the group. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but I just hadn't, I hadn't gotten used to that performance. And it, it took me to the first contest to, to watch a vid and to look and like everybody else is going ham. And while I was accurate and, you know, playing all my notes right, I looked bored. I looked bored, I looked boring, and I looked stupid compared to everybody else. So for me, I had to learn how to perform. Like, you know, they weren't worried about, yeah. can he learn the music? You know, there's like, all right, can, will he look the part and do what he needs to do? It's so like some of, some of our, my kids this yeah. year, like they are so robotic and it's because they're, I, I, I can see them focusing on, here's my notes, here's what I got to play. And it's like, y'all are playing the hell out of this music. Like, this is probably one of our best fronts that we've ever had. And I don't know why. It's just we've got some good talent and, and they can play it. And it's like, now y'all got to get this out of the keyboard. And mm-hmm. it's okay to look like you're having mm-hmm. fun. Like, I shouldn't look down yeah. at you all and it looked like somebody's dog got ran over before rehearsal this morning. Like, it's okay to smile. It's okay to look at each other and have fun and acknowledge that, yeah, we're having fun doing this and we're making right. good music. But it's like you look down there and they're like, I'm like, come on. Come on. Y'all. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times a kid would be playing like Blood, Sweat, and Tears or the best to kiss or some kind of like rock show or funk show. And I'm like, all right, this is fun. And then you look down and they're just like, hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, this is literally half the sheet right now. And you're, you're making me. I, I eat groups. I'm about to say when I judge, I eat groups up about it. I do. I don't, you should already learn how to play yeah. before you got here. Right. So I'll judge you on if it's clean or not. But if you're not performing, yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's half the sheet performance for, for us in our state. <laughs> performance effect is half the sheet. And it's just like, I'm glad you can do the 16th note run, but what, why, what, what makes me want to watch you or listen to you? You know, I sh- it shouldn't be this way, but I tell my friend, I was, I was like, I want them to forget there's a band on the field. You need to be that engaging, both musically and visually, that they forget that there's wind players playing in front of you. Like, get all the way to the box, grab them by the throat, and pull you onto the floor. Um, and, and Cavi's front does that. Like, they're one of the few fronts that will that sometimes overshadows what the batter is doing, just because the way that it's written. Um, the way that's written and the way that's like it's, I, it's like I say in, in our in our main episodes, you mm-hmm. know, if you are pulling my attention, if you're a guard or a front ensemble that's grabbing my attention, you are doing your job because that's the bottom of my list of where I'm looking. And Cavies did it this year for me. Front ensemble, of course, Vanguard always does it. Um, yeah, so I mean, if you if you're making me forget about all the other things that I want to be looking for, yeah. Yeah, but no, definitely Cavaliers are are doing fantastic stuff with their crew as usual. Um, It's just it's now such a battle, you know that 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 to that top five top percussion world top five I'd say pretty strong. Um, Mm -hmm. Just to just to do that stuff, you know that that battery gets bolstered up, and that pit stays where it's the same. You know you're gonna have. You're gonna have a whole new, you know, ball game on your end with them. Oh yeah, next year is gonna be highly mm-hmm. interesting. Highly I mean, interesting. So, any closing thoughts, fellas? Thanks for having me on another episode of Perk Talk. Yeah, man. Yeah. Come a regular. 
Don't contribute much. <laughs> At least not on the technical side of things. Listen, perspective. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. There's a lot of, you know, and people have probably picked up on this, but Will will throw out a lot of the technical stuff, especially when it comes to batteries. My eyes just don't function well enough to see all that yeah. stuff. Will can like, I was, I was like, I just saw the hands move really fast. Box. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm sure will. You know, but, you know, I'll comment on, on the construction and the arrangement of the book a lot and, you know, different perspectives for different things. Like, you know, it, mm-hmm. there's lots of elements to it. And, um, oh, yeah. when you can reach, when you can now, when you can have the technical facility and all of the cool book, but also make it in a way that it's enhancing what mm-hmm. the wind players are, are, even the color guard is doing. Um, you know, I like the brain part of it too. And so when you can hit, and then the performance aspect of it. So when you can hit that trifactor, um, you get you get something special, and you get like you get what yep. you get out of Vanguard and Blue Coats and Blue Devils. Um, you get all those things. So, I mean, it's all, all perspectives, you know, all perspectives. Because I'm sure there's somebody that can be like that could pick apart that <laughs> rack book. <laughs> You know, but well, if you had to play it, you know, if they wanted a little thinner sound, they shouldn't have played it at a forty-five degree angle to get the overtone of the triangle. You know, see, oh gosh, too much. But I mean, that's the thing, though. You know, <laughs> uh, listen, if my kids don't know nothing else, they know forty-five degree angles. They know that. <laughs> so, but yeah. Well, if there's nothing else. This has been uh, episode 10 of Perk Talk. Um, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, uh, please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. We are on all social media platforms, all the major social media platforms, I should say. We are not on TikTok. We're not, mm-hmm. uh, Don't tempt uh, us. Uh, uh, it'll be all right. Yeah. 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 I'm, uh, you, I'll, I'll let you handle okay. that because I, I don't even have the app. I, I'll just... I see, I don't see, that's that 40s. That's that 40s. You ain't got time to mess with it. Man. <laughs> too many other ones. Yeah, Twitter's shit. Facebook's enough. Um, but check it out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, uh-huh. Twitter. I think I hit them all. Uh, and then you can yep. listen to our podcast on YouTube, uh, Anchor.fm, and Spotify. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, let us know in the comments below. What do you think about the Gary's Front Ensemble this year? Or just how people are approaching things uh, as far as that stuff is concerned. Any groups you want us to listen to, uh, we're going to be doing a little mm-hmm. weekend. But yeah, Good we're going to be cran- cranking these out as much as we possibly can because there's a lot of stuff out there to listen to. Um, and even our, our WGR friends that are even that are mm-hmm. concert ensembles, we ain't forgot about you either because I'm a concert ensemble dude. Nah. So, like, we'll listen to whatever. If you want to send your high school <laughs> Halloween concert, I don't care. <laughs> like, we will, we will listen to it all. Um, so, let us know what you think. So, for this is William and Zach. Uh, my name is Cedric. Uh, this has been Perk Talk, episode 10. Um, until next time, make sure you love one another. Oh, and I like that. Stuff. Just not children. Woo, drugs. <laughs>